Greetings and salivation. I am Umthoff Neverborn, the abyss that slumber, and you are listening to The Elvish God. I'm trying a new format now. I actually had this computer for almost a month now, and I keep looking around and going, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that, that's already been done, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I realized something last night when I was looking through videos. Um, there's another YouTuber I'm going to, but he said, I don't know what to do anymore, I need suggestions, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of empathized a lot with him, with what he was saying. But then I realized something, I'm not, I'm not making videos I wanted to find out why, and it comes down to, I think I'm afraid. And it's not that I'm afraid of, of liberals. I'm not afraid of being punished. I'm not afraid of, you know, people doxing me or anything like that. I'm not really, I'm not really concerned about that. The only reason I keep using an icon is if this ever does become successful, uh, my face does not look good on a t-shirt. You know, you've got to have that icon that appeals to people and so you can market it. But that said... I'm more afraid of putting something out that isn't good. I'm afraid of putting something out there and it not being relevant, it not helping people, it being pointless. And so I constantly redo everything. I sit down, I read, and I go, oh, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that. So instead, this time, I'm going to start putting out a series of videos where I do no editing whatsoever. I'm not even going to put in the reverb. I'm not going to alter the voice at all to give it that, you know, Eldritch God warble i'm just going to talk so that said i want to move on to just whatever pops into my head and of course the topic of hand is trump's inauguration now for the record personally i don't like the guy very much however i'm not hiring him and we are indeed hiring him to be the president of the united states because of his personality we are hiring him because he has a proven track record of pulling the most amazing shit out of his ass. The guy is a problem solver. He is competent. And I, I, I agree with Stephen Molyneux. I love competent people. I love people who get things done. When I go to the bank, I had a bank, where they screwed up my account, like, literally, seven times in a row. They just, they just could not get it right. But they were so nice. They were so polite to me the whole time that they were fucking up my finances. That my paycheck was disappearing into the ether. Eventually, I switched to a different bank, and I got a bank with one of the rudest bitches I'd ever encountered. But she fixed it on the first try. That is what I prefer. I will take rude but efficient over polite and incompetent any day of the week. And that is what we've been dealing with. That is the world that we currently live in, where an ounce of image is worth a pound of performance, where we don't care if you can actually get results, we care what it looks like. And that's what affirmative action is. We don't care if you're actually the best person for the job. We care if you look like you're, you're taking care of things. Do you look like a woman? You don't actually have to be one. But if you're a man who looks like a woman and is willing to say you're a woman, wow, that's bonus points. Because that right there makes you a trans woman. Hey, that's wonderful. Uh, image is completely unimportant. Fluff is unimportant. It's something that I've developed over the years is this eye for what is fluff and what is reality. What is the actual important part? What are the rules, the regulations? And I use that to a great degree to, for most of my success in my early career, I, I'm, I was never a very good salesman. I was never very good at much of anything except for finding a way to exploit the rules, finding a way to take the rules and twist them in a fashion that nobody expected them to go. I was a master at finding loopholes. And that mastery of loopholes is what made me money. 
it got results. And eventually I quit. I'll get into that story some other time. But my point is, is that these days, people don't pay attention to the rules. They pay attention to the fluff. Now, I'm going to speak a bit of uh, gaming terms to you. Those of you who are gamers are going to, old school gamers are going to understand what I'm talking about. There are normal players. These guys go out, they play the game, they play by the rules, they win, they lose, whatever. And then there's the power gamers. The power gamers are the ones who play the game for power. They don't necessarily care how they get it. They'll use a cheat code. They'll use a hack. They'll do whatever it takes to get power. They take the shortcut straight to power, and they don't necessarily always win. Because the goal isn't to win, the goal is to become powerful. You might have the biggest gun in the game, but if you don't know how to fire it, what's the point? Well, they don't care. They want the biggest gun with the most bullets and the biggest bells and whistles. Then you get your rules lawyers. The rules lawyer is somebody who's more concerned with the rules, needless to say. Um, they'll nitpick the smallest detail, but what people don't realize is a rules lawyer doesn't care so much about the game, winning or losing, they care about what the rules are. It, that's their obsession. As they don't mind winning, they don't mind losing, as long as it's by the rules. In, in some respects, they're kind of a diametric opposite of the power gamer. Now, there's a rare combination of the two. It, it, they may sound opposite, but they're not. They do work together. Somebody who is obsessed with the rules and somebody who wants power. We call this individual the munchkin. Donald Trump is the king of munchkins. He is the munchkin master. King of the Oompa Loompas, if you will. He knows the rules and how to exploit them. His whole campaign, and I said this from the beginning, he wasn't trying to get elected by being popular. He wanted to be elected by the Electoral College. Now, admittedly, my prediction was he was going to win the Electoral College by one vote, maybe two or three extra, but that was his goal. He had figured out how to reach one electoral vote more than Hillary, and that was going to be it. He was going to lose the popular vote, which I, which I did get right, but he was going to only squeak by on the Electoral. I never imagined the landslide that he got. That was incredible. That was a, that was a dog pile. That was a crushing defeat. And I love how Hillary Clinton goes, well, here's the one who won the, 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 the popular vote. Well, guess what? The popular vote doesn't exist. It's, a, it, it, it's, it's an illusion. Okay, It's not real. We're a republic. We are 50 different nations, 50 different states. A state used to be what a country was. A country was a state. We are 50 countries that are all united. We are the united countries. That's why we are a republic. Because each state is supposed to have its own rights in this alliance. Now, there's some things that, you know, you don't have, you know, and have slaves. But uh, other things, yeah, we allow you to make your own choices. What the federal government does not reserve for itself, the state is supposed to have. And what the state does not reserve for itself, the people have. That's how it works. It's a republic. Donald Trump knew that. He knew that. And when he looked at what the media was doing, he was realizing, wow, you guys are doing nothing but fluff. You're not technically lying. None of them ever really lied. Everybody says, oh, that's the lying media. It's the fake media. No, it's not the lying media. People call it lying by omission. It wasn't even lying by omission. No such thing exists. You can't lie by omitting details. What they did was, is they were deceptive. And this is the problem. Everybody wants to call it lighting or false or fake or whatever. You got to call something what it is in order to defeat it. And what the problem is, is that the media is deceptive, both to themselves and to everyone around them. That's why you had Hillary up by 11 points. When you looked at that poll, you'd say, wow, you overpulled Democrats by 11 points. And in America, the number of Democrats and the number of Republicans is pretty well even. So if you skew one party over another, of course the thing's going to be skewed. But they believed what they created. They didn't doubt themselves. I used to think that they were lying 
which is an intentional deception, but they're not. Their deception is, their ex remarks are completely honest. It's how they think. It is how they feel. It, it is their perception of reality. Unfortunately, we have an entire generation, possibly two, that have been told that reality is equal to how you perceive it. You can do anything. Even as we speak, right now I am staring at the wall and I see a calendar from a coworker. If you believe, you can fly. And there's a little picture of Tinkerbell. Now, I understand the need for these positive affirmations because in my job, people kill themselves. And our job is to prevent that. But it's entirely disingenuous. No matter how much you believe, I cannot fly. And people go, oh, well, then, you know, you can get on a plane or you can learn to do this. And that. No, you're changing the criteria. You're changing the goalpost. I cannot right now float into the air, no matter how much I believe. That doesn't matter. It used to be that we tell, if you believe it, you can be whatever you want to be. Now I tell people the honest truth. I go, you can't be whatever you want to be. Okay? Follow your dreams after you get a good paying job so you can afford your dreams. Your dreams are your hobby. Your dreams are what you do to keep yourself sane. But you have been given a set of gifts and limitations. Your ability to perform is entirely inherent on what you have developed, what skills you have learned, as well as the limitations you were born with. There's only so much you can do. So within those parameters, you must find a way to survive in society and thrive if possible. And once you are thriving, once you have paid your bills, once you have taken care of your family, once you have established yourself, then by all means, pursue your dreams after you've secured a source of income that will take care of your ability to pursue that dream. Because the number of people who actually achieve their dreams when they pursue it it's probably one out of a hundred. And chances are you're going to fail. Because everybody says pursue your dreams. But the fact is it's really hard to do that. Very few of us are superstars. Donald Trump is one of those. He has a we I could go on for an hour listing the various successes he's pulled out of his ass. He gets results. You throw him into horrible situations and somehow he figures out a way to win. Now, here's the part that I want to assure everybody that it's going to be okay. Because I'm listening to people like Mundane Matt and other liberals who are somewhat sane, but still pretty scared of Trump. And I want to assure you of something because you're all saying, oh, we need checks and balances. Nobody's ever going to stand in his way. He's just going to run wrench off over everything. Oh, how can we trust him? This is why. Because none of you know what he wants. Nobody addresses what Donald Trump's goals are. You believe that everything he says is just a narrative. Especially the liberals. They think that nothing he says is real because nothing they say is real. And they see only themselves in their enemies. They don't understand Trump. None of these people understand Trump. And you're saying, hey, well, do you think you understand him? I think I do. I think I've, I've pierced the veil. I've seen the inherent motivation. Me, I've talked to probably 100,000 people in my lifetime. Sometimes I did it on the suicide prevention hotline. Sometimes I did it as a bill collector. And I've done it a lot. And when you've talked to 100,000 people, everybody's a special snowflake. Everybody is an individual. But after a while, people start to rhyme. Certain things pop out as consistent with other things. Stereotyping, you may say, but it works. Donald Trump, his motivation is he wants to be immortal. I don't mean he physically wants to live forever. He wants to be immortal. He wants his name up there with the great presidents of the United States. You know, it's going to be... George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Donald Trump. That's what he wants. 
That's what he wants. He wants to be just as, when you say the greatest president, well, there's George Washington. And then there's Abe Lincoln. And then he wants it to be number three. He wants to be Donald Trump, third greatest president ever of the United States of America. And with that, he will become immortal. And that is why at this time he has become running for president. He thought about it previously, but he didn't because in his mind, as a munchkin, as a power gaming rules lawyer, he saw past the fluff, saw past the fluff of all of society and said, it hasn't quite fallen all the way. I need to wait until society is just a bit closer to the precipice. I need it dangling over the edge. And then I will come in at the last moment and grab society's hand and pull it up. And my victory, the greatness I bring America to, will seem all the sweeter when we compare it to how low we had gone. And that's the truth. Everybody wonders what he wants. That man would burn his own empire to the ground. He would mortgage everything to achieve his goal of immortality, of being known as the third greatest president the United States has ever done. He knows he's never going to beat George Washington and Abe Lincoln. He knows that. He's not even going to try. But number three slot, oh, that's open. Number three still open. Nobody's quite agreed who's the third greatest president. He will, be, he will aim for that. He will destroy himself. He will destroy everything he has. He will sacrifice everything for this goal because for him, this is his legacy. Obama said, I have the Obama legacy. No, you didn't. You did not. You sold out your legacy for short-term gain over and over again. Your first two years, you were honest. Your last six, you were a puppet on the string. Everybody's afraid of what Donald Trump's going to do. Donald Trump's goal is to make America great again. Period. End of statement. That is his goal. And he wants everybody to say it was him who did it. He wants to be known as the man of the hour, the, the return of King Arthur. He wants to be the one who pulls the sword from the stone. He wants everybody to speak of Donald Trump, the legend of Donald Trump. He will die, as all men die, unless his research into cloning actually succeeds, in which case all those clones he has in that, uh, you know, uh, warehouse in China, well, you know, the spare parts might keep him going for a while. But besides that, besides replacing the, or his internal organs, Donald Trump attempted immortality is nothing short of success. He... He literally wants America to be great again because then he can take credit for it. It's why he didn't do anything before. It's why in some ways, when you look at his track record, he may have actually accelerated the decline of America. But he did that because he was planning for this moment. The further down it goes, the further up he can bring us. You know, it's kind of like, uh, what was it? Uh, what was that show? Uh, greatest Losers or Biggest Losers. It was that weight loss show. And one thing that they didn't, that, that people would do is they would bulk eat beforehand to get their weight up because then it was much easier to suddenly lose weight. Cheaty. But it works. Donald Trump, I'm not saying that he created this situation. He just, you know, chose to step back and let things go and like a true munchkin, waited for the right moment, stepped in, and played four-dimensional chess while Hillary Clinton was playing checkers. It was, it was surreal to watch him. I love this little trick that he would do. He would come out and he would say, yeah, um, you know, Mexicans are only sending their rapists here. And the media would go, pa, they don't send all rapists. You know, only 80% of the women who come across the border are raped. Wait a minute, what? Uh, I, you know, and people go, wait a minute, I didn't know that any of the, that 80% of the immigrants, female immigrants coming across the southern border are raped? What? He would make an outlandish state, and he, he put this in his book. If you, if you actually read his book, The Art of the Deal, he did, 
Nothing he did in his campaign would be a surprise to you. None of it. Not one single moment of his campaign would be a surprise. But I'm willing to bet Hillary Clinton never so much as touched a copy. If she had, she might have actually known how he was setting her up time and time again. And the media, Donald Trump saw through the fluff, saw the truth, and realized that when the time came, they would crumble. And it's happened again. And I thought it was beautiful. Some people are terrified by it, but I think it's beautiful. Where they held a press conference, where they sent somebody out, who did nothing but tell the press, you're a bunch of liars, here's where you lied. And then he left, and he took no questions. And he made it quite clear, if you lie, we will call you out. If you tell the truth, no matter what it is, we'll let it go. As long as you're telling a truth, we'll let it go. You lie, you're deceptive, we're going to mention it. And if you think Donald Trump's going to stop tweeting, you're wrong. If he needs to, he'll ignore the media. He'll just set up his own website. He'll direct mail everyone in America if he wants to, because he's the president and he can do that. I bet you didn't know that. He, he does have it. They, they will pay for his postage free. He can, if he's willing to pay for the letters, send every American a letter that says, Hi, I'm Donald Trump, and here's the truth. The media cannot compete with the POTUS. And they're trying to. Because they know he is going to call them out every time they pull their bullshit. And they've got nothing. They're terrified. They know they're collapsing. But the reason why they're collapsing is their own fault. They're all Jerry Springer. We already have Jerry Springer. CNN is nothing more than Jerry Springer with a better background and less strippers. As long as they continue to fall away from what people want, and what people want is stop giving us your opinions, just give us the facts and, and then move on. As long as CNN and Fox, because Fox is like thinking, hey, Trump's on our side. No, he's not. No, no, Fox News is... He is going to call you out just as much as everybody else. You know, you may think you've got an in, but you're not. Because he knows you turned on him too. The only way this is going to work itself out is if the media gets back to its roots, which is, we're going to tell the truth, and we're going to let you decide. And if we have an opinion piece, we're going to say, call it opinion piece, and it'll be an opinion column. Or an opinion section. Make it clear it's an opinion. As opposed to fact. Because all opinions are true. The problem is. They're only true in so much as. That's what you believe. Whether or not that opinion actually reflects reality. Is another story. But it doesn't mean your opinion isn't valid. It's just. That's what you believe. That and you truly believe that. Unless you're lying to me, of course. Donald Trump is a munchkin. Probably the best munchkin ever. And we are probably lucky that his goal is immortality. Which I have no doubt he will succeed if it is all possible. He doesn't have much time, though. He's only got two years. Everybody, oh no, he's got eight. He's got eight. Or at least four. No, 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 no. He's got two years. Probably actually only a year, because within a year, all the midterm elections are going to start. And once they start, he cannot count on a single Republican. If he has not won within 12 months of yesterday, he's not going to. He needs to lay the groundwork within the next 12 months. Or trust me, this is they will find a way to take him down. But he's got 12 months. And that man loves a deadline. I have no doubt, no doubt at all that Donald Trump is going to kick some serious ass. And everything he's going to do is going to be to make America great again. Not make America great for everyone. That's the other downside of it, though. 
His goal is to make America great. Not the companies of America. Not even the American people. Even though he says so, it isn't. He'll sacrifice 5% of the population to give the other 95%, you know, paradise. He'll do that. Because the remaining 95% will sing his praise and he will become a legend and in so become immortal. So I'm not saying that this is a good thing or a bad thing. It is the thing. It is what is going to happen. He is seeking immortality and his path to immortality will be the legacy of America going from an abysmal low to an incredible high within eight years and everybody will sing his praises. They will remember him for centuries. And if he has his way, he'll get his face carved on the side of Mount Rushmore. And I can't fault the guy. People say his ego's too big. I'm not sure. If I could, I think he's just being honest. If you actually look at the list of miracles that he has pulled off, he's got every right to be more than a little arrogant. But in the end, it'll all come down to him wanting to make America the country great. He doesn't care about the companies in it. He doesn't care about the people. He cares about what his legacy will be. Like Obama claimed he wanted, but didn't really. We'll get into Obama another time. At any rate, this is as good a place to stop. I am Umthoff Neverborn, the abyss that slumbers, and you have been listening to The Eldritch God.